Alpha-2A. Um, this codes for the Alpha-2 receptor, and the Alpha-2 receptor is your norepinephrine receptor, both presynaptic and postsynaptic. And what you see is if you have the G allele, the sensitive allele, at the norepinephrine receptor, you have better response, this is all studied in children, better response to methylphenidate if you have the G allele. So your rates didn't increase, but your magnitude of effect did increase. So this was looking at inattentive scores. You had better inattentive scores in these kids if they had the G allele compared to the A allele. So you can kind of use these two genes together. If you're comped val val, that does predict better response rates. If you're comped val val plus adra 2 a g that's two genes telling you, hey, Ritalin's probably a good choice in this kid because not only are they more likely to respond, the strength of response will probably be higher. Is that true for Adderall too in that case? I mean, it's, so, are you just, you start with methylphenidate? Is that why you say methylphenidate? All of the studies were done with methylphenidate. Okay, so, so you could assume that could, could yeah. be a, okay. So just for the flip side of the treatment of ADHD, if we know a val -val will respond very well to, to the Ritalin, the to Ritalin, um, what about those who present predominantly more inattentive and less impulsive is there? Can you use this to see will they respond to a Stratera or an alpha agonist yeah, or something? That's a common question also. So there's very preliminary data showing that these um, kids respond, if they don't have the G allele, that they respond better to guanfacine. Okay. Very okay. preliminary. Also some data showing that uh, for depression, if you have the G allele, you respond better to melnasopran. Um, so I don't have a good answer for that, but There's it's possible. nothing in the other panel, the comps, nope. for the dopamine. Okay, so that would just yeah. be this, not it. Okay. And this is a new one, too. This is new one. All right. Yep. Hmm. All right, so folate. Let's talk a little bit about folate. So we talked about this. Folate gets converted into methylfolate. Methylfolate helps produce your catecholamines, and it's also um, donates a methyl group to SAMe, and then SAMe runs around methylating everything else in your body. Methylation is basically an off switch, right? So methylation will sh shut off a lot of genes. The opposite of methylation is acetylation. That's your on switch. So there's a, lot, there's a fine balance between methylating genes and acetylating genes. Methylating will turn them off, acetylating will turn them on. So there's two SNPs that we look at. Uh, one is this is called 677, the other is called 1298, and this is just the position um, on the gene where we look at these SNPs. If you have a T allele, there's a 35% reduction in your conversion rates. If you have two T alleles, it's a 70% reduction. If at the other SNP you have a C allele, there's a 20% reduction. Two C alleles is a 40% reduction. So the combination of these two alleles tells you how well your patient's uh, converting their folate to methylfolate. Worst case scenario, you can be at like 10% conversion rates, but you're practically not making any methylfolate. So what do you do to get around that? You supplement with methylfolate. So here's the, um, this was a big study that looked at the association of MTHFR mutants to different disease states. MTHFR mutation is associated with depression. MTHFR mutation is associated with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Anxiety doesn't seem to make a difference, but with the other three disease states, having that variant puts you at risk for these disorders. So here is um, you know, one of the bigger studies that looked at supplementation of l methylfolate to treat depression. This is when it was added to an SSRI 7.5 milligrams didn't do a damn thing. 15 milligrams did. So 15 milligrams of methylfolate when 